You know you've arrived when you get Mary Washington to introduce you. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. For quite some time now, I have come to accept that all things happen for a reason. And although I didn't support his choice of political friends, Steve Harvey said something very profound recently. He said that when bad things happen in their lives, he taught his children to apply a very simple principle. Instead of asking, why did this happen to me? He taught them to, to ask, why is this happening for me? What am I supposed to learn from this bad thing that is happening for me? Or what am I supposed to learn from this good thing that is happening for me? So I hadn't fully come to that understanding yet when I met my honoree, Cal Strawhan, back in 1990, sorry, 1991. But it was something that I was about to learn. As you heard in the introduction, I'm a former Marine officer. And in 1991, my partner was an architect whose name was Chris Duncan. We discovered that he was HIV positive. And it was also about this time that I was asked to join Chase Brexton's board. So Chris and I had been together three years at that point, And I decided I needed to leave the Corps so that we could do whatever we could to help him fight the virus. Cal's long-term partner was Bill Beagle, an interior designer at the Chambers firm. Bill and, and Chris enjoyed getting to know each other. So while they were working on a, a residential project. So Bill and Cal were kind enough to invite us to their cabin in the woods in West Virginia. Okay, now get those dirty thoughts out of your mind. <laughs> it was a very platonic weekend. But since I was leaving the Corps, I networked with everybody possible to let them know that I was getting out of the Marine Corps. So I, that weekend was no exception. And Cal worked at the Baltimore branch of the Federal Reserve Bank. And after our visit to the cabin that weekend, I made sure that he had my resume on his desk by Monday afternoon or Tuesday at the latest. Now I'm certain that without Cal's intervention that I wouldn't have been able to easily transition from the Marine Corps to banking. I made a vow when I left the Corps, I think some of you were at the Chamber event, that I would never work for another organization where I could lose my job because of my orientation. But as I said, it was the early 90s and the financial in industry wasn't exactly marching at the head of pride parades, but they were certainly more accepting than the Marine Corps. Nonetheless, Cal set the example for me so that I could learn how to navigate the obstacles that he encountered when he was a young banker. He was a sounding board for any question that I had when it came to banking or the Fed. In short, he was invaluable when it came to learning about banking or regarding career decisions. He ultimately worked there for 35 years during a time when you kept your orientation very private. You were cautious about being seen out at a restaurant for dinner with, with three other men. And you changed your pronouns when you talked about your weekend plans, your past weekend plans. <laughs> In addition to the Fed, unfortunately, we had something else in common. We both had partners who were ill. His partner, Bill, had multiple sclerosis. And as I said earlier, Chris was HIV positive. Bill's MS slowly but surely progressed to a point where Cal would have to eventually retire early so that he could take care of him. If you ask him to this day, he would say that his greatest accomplishment was learning how to handle all the medical, physical, and emotional needs that Bill required, and completely caring for him for the latter portion of the 25 years that they were together until his last breath. Now, although my partner Chris died before Bill, Cal once again set the example of what a caring, supportive partner should be in this new world of same-sex couples being able to live openly together. 
After Chris died, I met my partner of 24 years and now husband of soon to be six years. And <laughs> that's right. One of the first people that I introduced him to was Cal. That night after spending just a few minutes with Paul, Cal promptly pulled me aside to say, he's a keeper. <laughs> Since then, Cal has accompanied us on trips to San Francisco, London, We've driven around Italy, Switzerland, traversed the Atlantic aboard the Queen Mary II, just to name a few. Wow. There are very few Broadway or other live theater performances in Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area that Cal hasn't seen. In fact, his Playbill collection is so large that he's looking for a library or school that will take them all collectively. He's always the first to let us know when we have to see this or that production, and he makes sure that we hear the right soundtrack from the latest or greatest musical. Cal is a living embodiment of a motto from, Cher, from Cher's mother. Cher's mother said, age ain't nothing but a number. If you don't bother it, it won't bother you. <laughs> he continues to set the pace for my friends and me, showing us how to enjoy retirement how to reinvent ourselves after retirement, how to continue to be involved in the community, and how to make sure that we respond to what is happening for us, not to us. Just a couple of Calisms that I gotta share with you before I sit down, because they're too important not to. If he forgets a name or can't remember a title, he says, oh Frank, don't get old. <laughs> When he has that occasional ailment or medical procedure, he reminds us that getting old ain't for sissies. <laughs> Lastly, if someone says something that could be considered innuendo, such as, I've never seen one that big before, his first response is, well, that's what Mary said to me at the picnic. <laughs> With that, please join me in saluting my remarkable LGBT elder and champion, Cal Strawhan. 